These days, if you don't like a certain president, king or any other leader, the only things you can legally do are complain about them to your friends or spend your whole day angrily tweeting at them, both of which do absolutely nothing. So some people decide to go a step further and take things into their own hands. Now most of these assassination attempts are the same. Guy gets a gun, he shoots, he misses and everyone goes home. There's no drama, there's no uniqueness. If I'm gonna see someone get killed in broad daylight, I want it to be creative, goddammit. Thankfully, there have been assassins in the past with some unique reasons and ways to kill someone. So let's talk about the weirdest assassination attempts in history. Before the video starts, only around 25% of the people who watch me are subscribed. So if you aren't subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's free and it helps the channel out. Anyways, back to the video. Our first attempt was in the 200s. Jing Ki was a wandering swordsman at the time, which was basically the Uber Eats of killing people. Apparently assassinations were so common at the time that this was an actual career choice. At the time, China was broken up into many regions and the biggest boy of the bunch was going after the smaller kingdom. So the prince of that region hired Jing Ki to kill the king of the big region, King Zheng. Now killing such an important target would be hard, but $20 is $20. So Jing Ki head out to do the job. He reached the king and tried to swing at him. But after a short sword fight with Zheng, Jing Ki was eventually wounded and taken away to be executed. Despite his one-star review, the prince unfortunately didn't get a refund. But our story doesn't end there. You see, when Jing Ki was executed, Zheng wanted all of Jing Ki's friends to be killed too. And that included this one guy called Gao Jian Li. He was a musician and his favorite instrument was the lute, which apparently isn't a flute with six notes, but rather an instrument that looks like a guitar with a spinal fracture. When Jing Ki was killed, he had to go into hiding to protect himself. He stopped being a musician for a few years until he thought, well, there's no harm in playing the lute again, right? I mean, it's not like King Zheng is going to listen to it or anything. So he played his lute, and people liked it so much that, you guessed it, he was sent right to King Zheng's palace. Now the king immediately recognized who Gao was and was going to kill him, but was impressed by Gao's music skills, so he decided to spare his life. Just kidding, he took his fucking eyes out. Gao then became the royal musician, but he was still really angry about the whole killing your best friend and taking over the kingdom and then blinding you and forcing you to play music thing, and he wanted revenge. The king would let Gao sit really close to him while he played, so one day Gao decided to take the opportunity. King Zheng, you killed my best friend, you took over my kingdom and you blinded me. For that, I am going to kill you. Are you sure you're facing the right way? For some reason, Gao thought it would be a good idea to try to swing at the king, despite the fact that a lute was basically the size of a ukulele and probably would have just given the king a mild headache. And also the fact that Gao couldn't see shit. Gao unfortunately couldn't fiddle his way out of this mess, and so King Zheng decided to finally execute him. The next attempt happened in the 1800s. Giuseppe Fieschi was born on the island of Corsica in France, and he spent his whole childhood as a shepherd. He had two brothers, but one of them died while the other one couldn't speak, so it's safe to say he didn't have a lot of people to talk to. He joined the army, fought in war, blah blah blah, and he also had an affair with his stepdaughter. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, after all that, he decided that he was going to kill the king of France, Louis Philippe I. Why? I don't know. The guy grew up talking to sheep and fucks kids, so I'd be surprised if he didn't end up killing someone eventually. So he went out to buy a gun. Hello sir, I want a gun. What for? I can't tell you. Come on, I promise I won't tell anyone. Okay, fine. I'm gonna kill the king. Wait, what? Of course I won't give you a gun. Oh, r really? You're gonna need two guns. Oh, okay then, thanks. But wait, what if your guns get jammed? You definitely need a third one. Uh, Alright, I'll take that. But what if all three don't work? You must get a fourth one. But wait, your 24 guns might just fall apart. You should get a 25th one, just in case. Uh, okay, I think that's enough. How much is all this? That'll be $10,000. Okay, then here you go. Are you really sure I need all these guns? What? I guess Giuseppe was worried that he'd miss a shot, so he bought 25 guns and his plan was to hook them all up so they all fired at the same time. Apparently, nobody bothered to ask him why he had that many guns, but to be fair, if I saw Giuseppe the sheep whispering pedophile carrying a bunch of deadly weapons, I'd probably just mind my own business. 
He built the whole thing himself and then pointed it out of the window of his house onto the street down below, where the king would be passing by in a few days. Finally, on the 20th of July, Giuseppe got his chance. The king was walking along the street along with a bunch of his officers, and when they got close, Giuseppe fired the gun. The gun, despite being a psychopath's DIY project, managed to somehow shoot around 400 bullets in the king's direction. The bullets killed 18 people. Approximately zero of them were the king, which either meant that the king got some connections in heaven or that Giuseppe's gun was as accurate as me trying to kill anyone in a shooter game. In fact, the king managed to pull an Uno reverse card and Giuseppe got hurt more than the king. Some of the barrels of the gun backfired and Giuseppe got serious injuries on his face and hands while the king was completely fine and just continued with his day, which is such a fucking power move. Giuseppe was captured pretty quickly after that. I mean, the guy had half his face blown off so finding him probably wasn't that hard. And a few days later, he was executed by the guillotine. The moral of the story is, if you're gonna kill someone, don't use a weapon that I would have made up in kindergarten. Our next assassination happened in the 1800s too, in the good old US of A, which has had loads of assassination attempts in the past. I really can't tell why. Unlike the last guy, Richard Lawrence was perfectly normal growing up. He was born in England, moved to the US, did well in school. It was all going so great. Then he started huffing paint and everything went to shit. He got a job as a painter, and the paints back then contained lead and mercury. Great for decoration, not the best for healthy brain function. These chemicals made Richard Lawrence believe that he was actually Richard III of England, who keep in mind had been dead for around 300 years at this point. He quit his painting job and started buying really expensive clothes and stood outside his house doing nothing for hours on end. He also had the habit of trying to kill anyone who laughed at him or disagreed with him, so he wastes his money, does nothing and kills his opponents. Exactly what a real king would do. Now you might be asking, if he was buying all this expensive stuff, why did he quit his job? Well that's because he believed that the US government owed him loads of money, and the only thing in his way was the president at the time, Andrew Jackson. So, on the 30th of January, as Jackson was leaving a funeral, Richard Lawrence confronted him. Good day to you, Mr. Jackson. It is I, Richard III, King of England, and I am here to kill you. Prepare to die. N no worries, I, I came ready for this. Prepare to die again. Both of Richard's guns failed to work, so Andrew Jackson proceeded to beat the shit out of him with his cane. Richard was finally put in a mental hospital for this, I guess thinking you're a dead English king just wasn't a good enough reason, and he eventually died there in 1861. Our last assassination attempt wasn't done by an adult emperor or an irate engineer, but rather by the victim's own son. It was the year 59, and Nero was the emperor of Rome, but he still lived with his mom Agrippina, who was described as overwatchful and overcritical. Nero, did you wash the dishes? Nero, did you mow the lawn? Nero, I told you to do your homework. Nero, you were supposed to clean your room. Nero, where's your report card? Nero, did you get Nero, what's Nero, where's my Nero, 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 I'm gonna kill that goddamn woman. Agrippina must have committed the cardinal sin of telling Nero to pause an online game. And as we all know, the punishment for that is death. Nero considered just poisoning or stabbing her, but it's pretty hard to make multiple holes in someone's body look like an accident, so he decided to get more creative. His first plan was to build a machine above her bed so that when she decided to sleep, the ceiling would fall onto her and kill her. He set everything up and it almost worked, but then someone snitched on him and Agrippina found out. To be fair, I think she would have found out anyway. Nero then thought of another plan. He paid someone to crash Agrippina's boat and then invited her onto a specially made boat as an apology. Now it's probably not the best idea to get on a boat with the guy who tried to kill you just a few days ago, but Agrippina must have been like, Nero, are you gonna kill me? What? No, I I'd never do that. Yeah, that's good enough. Nero's new plan was to have the ceiling of the boat fall onto her and hopefully kill her. I mean, if she saw it coming the first time, I'm sure she'll fall for it the second time. Unfortunately for Nero, the ceiling did fall but missed Agrippina and instead killed one of her servants. Nero had to come up with another plan quick, so he decided to sink the whole boat with everyone in it so he could kill Agrippina. Seems a bit excessive, but this is the same guy who burned down half of Rome to build a new palace, so I don't think he cares that much about a few extra dead people. So he ordered the captain to make a hole so the boat would sink. Finally, the boat's going under. 
There's no way Agrippina can get out of this. Wait, what is she doing? So, it appears to me that she is escaping. What? How is she doing that? The boat is sinking. Yes, sir, but it looks like she knows how to swim. Oh, forgot about that. Yep. This boat was really expensive. Agrippina managed to escape death once again and swam safely to shore. At this point, even Nero realized that he was absolutely shit at killing people and just hired some real assassins to do it for him instead. Model of the story is, when being creative doesn't work, all you need is a knife. So yeah, those are some of the weirdest failed assassination attempts in history. And now a joke from our patron. How many nice guys does it take to screw in a light bulb? None. They'll just compliment it a bunch and then call it a whore when it won't screw. <laughs> Anyways, like the video if you liked it, subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment and check out some other videos in the description. I'll see you guys later. I got Oh, no.